Hi there, hope you're having a lovely day so far. You know, having a baby is one of the happiest moments any one of us can experience in life. Really, what could be more priceless and beautiful than bringing a new life into the world? But when the world as we know it is right in the middle of a global pandemic, it undoubtedly is making the prenatal journey a little bit more difficult for our parents to be than it actually should be. And understandably, this is causing expecting mothers to feel a lot more anxious than normal. You know, due to the government jurisdictions with social distancing and self-isolation, many prenatal classes are now, now cancelled and with the limits um, now put on um, with social distancing, it actually is limiting the amount of support people allowed in birthing suites. Now, all of us really want the COVID-19 era just to stop. But one thing for sure that is not going to stop is the fact that babies are going to continue to be born. So in saying this, what advice can we offer mums to be to help manage their prenatal anxiety during the COVID-19 era of self-isolation? Well, today we are joined by Lael Stone for some simple things that will help. Now, she's a childbirth educator and co-creator of About Birth, one of Australia's leading online education programs. Now, About Birth um, is a comprehensive um, birth education program endorsed by doctors and midwives and created by childbirth educators. Now, it's a self-paced program delivered by video mod modules and, and a heap of downloadable resources that covers everything that a couple needs to know about giving birth, including the stages of labour, support, breathing, massage and lots more. Thank you so much for joining us. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. That was a that was a big spiel you just did then. It was a big <laughs> was spiel. It was a big spiel. You know, I know becoming a mum really is undoubtedly incomparable and unparalleled um, with anything in life. Um, but I guess so is this COVID nineteen era at the moment. So, in your personal opinion, uh, how much more challenging is this time for expectant uh, expectant mothers? I love it. It's, it's you're so right because having a baby, whether it's your first or your third or fourth baby, it's it's such a big transition in your life. You know, it affects us emotionally, physically, psychologically. There's so many changes that happen and there's so many unknowns that are going to happen as well. So already I find that having a baby for a lot of couples and particularly for women, there's just a level of, you know, um, anxiety or tension that sits there anyway just because of this amazing life event that's going to happen. But I think now because so many of the the resources or perhaps the things that we would lean into to take care of ourselves are not exactly accessible in the way that we've known them to be it is adding another element of stress so I mean from basic stuff to um, you know not necessarily seeing perhaps your midwife your doctor your caregiver face to face for some appointments for not having as much instant access to our medical care which some people might not be having and let alone you know for birth education wise support in labor but then also postnatally as well so I think it is a really heightened time for particularly pregnant women and you know this is I always say that when we're pregnant we need a lot of taking care of we need a lot of nurturing and a lot of love and then when we've got this extra stress going on as well it just can add another level of tension so my heart absolutely goes out to all those uh, pregnant women out there at the moment. Yeah, well, let's um, show them as much support as we can today. Hey, um, and, mm. and in your experience at the moment, um, what are some of the main concerns couples um, are experiencing at the moment, um, I guess, with the impending and imminent arrival of their newborns? Is there anything in particular that's really sort of sticking out for you at the moment? Yeah, well, I think there's, look, you know, there's an element of fear just around sickness, of course, and staying safe. So us not getting sick or, you know, going into a hospital setting if there is more illness around. So I think that is a fear. I think there's fear around not necessarily having the same educational support that some um, that pregnant women before this COVID-19 thing happened would, would have accessed. Um, you know, some I, I, there's a lot of women that we work with who were planning on having doulas or independent midwives yeah. or even a family member as extra support in the birthing suite and now um, they're limiting the amount of people who can be in the birth suite and I know that is a great deal of stress and having taught childbirth education for you know over 16 years now 
you know, I know that, you know, um, partners are really important in birth. They bring that beautiful oxytocin and connection to a birthing woman. But for some partners, the idea of being that support person in labor is really, really stressful. And that's often why you might get an extra support person or a doula or an independent midwife. So now that that's not there, I know that a lot of partners or, or men are feeling stressed about having to be that. Even though we have, you know, excellent midwifery care, we've got excellent doctors, there's still something about having that known care provider with you that provides an element of comfort. So I do know that that's absolutely a stress as well. And then also postnatally too, you know, where, you know, sometimes, you know, parents would come, they'd move in or grandparents provide support or postnatal doulas or we're accessing extra support, you know, for the new family. Some of that is not happening as well and that is causing a bit of stress. So, you know, I think it is a time where um, we have to uh, be creative. I think we have to figure out where we can access support and what can still help us navigate this time. Yeah. And we published your article titled Managing Pre-Birth Anxiety During COVID-19. For someone who hasn't read the article yet, can you give us a quick overview of what it's about and just what inspired you to write it? Yeah, well, I just think I'm, you know, I'm seeing a lot of, um, we're getting a lot of calls or we're working with a lot of couples at the moment who are feeling really anxious and worried. And, and I think my big thing around helping or supporting couples is to know that we do have a lot of tools and resources within us. We just need to be able to access them. So my article is really about just, you know, asking for support if we need it and how that support may look. It's also about coming back to trusting your body and, and your baby. You know, women do amazing jobs of growing babies all the time without needing to do anything about it. And when it comes to birth, you know, it's about trusting their body's natural state of, of um, knowing how to do the job, if, you know, if we can let it. Uh, it's also about just, you know, learning and getting some good education because I find too that one of the biggest things over the years of working in birth is that lack of education makes a big difference when it comes to how people feel about their birth. So because, you know, I think we live in a society where we've been, we're told through the media all the time that birth is really hard and it's going to be really painful and it, you know we're going to scream at our partners and all this kind of stuff we have often i say a hollywood version of birth that we're kind of fed a lot of the time through movies television media and really you know birth is an amazing extraordinary process and when we begin to understand how the body works how we can work with the body how powerful breathing is support how we get our hormones flowing when we get some education and begin to understand how the body works and how we can support it it actually alleviates a lot of the fear that sits there around what's going to happen and allows couples to then make informed choices which again minimize that fear and anxiety around what's going to happen yeah. so i find that knowledge is power and i think with birth i find that you know getting good education makes a massive difference in knowing what to expect but also making choices that feel good for you yep and with prenatal classes now um, cancelled across Australia, I mean, how are pregnant women feeling in general? Um, and if they can't attend um, hospital or birthing classes, really, what are yeah. their alternatives at the moment? Yeah, so look, I mean, many, many years ago, we actually built our online program because we realised we, we'd been teaching face-to-face -face classes for a really long time, but we realised that there were still people who couldn't access in education. So people who lived in rural communities, um, people who perhaps couldn't afford to go to a class, sometimes hospital classes were booked out. So we wanted to create something where women could actually access all the good information and get tools so that they can work with their bodies. And so therefore, you know, at this time, particularly now where we're not able to do face-to-face -face classes, then online learning is amazing as everybody I'm sure is all over at the moment. <laughs> Everything is online. So, you know, I think um, you can still absolutely access education and support online. So not only, you know, something like our program, which is really affordable, it's, it's all videos. You can sit it and watch it on your couch, in your pajamas, if you like. Um, it's got special sections for partners and, and all the stuff that you need to know. So there's that kind of thing that can really support your education. And then there's, um, I guess, elements too where you can get one-on-one -on -one support. So through somebody like doulas or independent, you know, childbirth educators or even independent midwives. So there are resources out there where if you're worried about something or you want to know more about something, you know, you can book sessions online with, with um, you know, professionals who can also give you that information. Cool. And what would be some simple advice you could offer for mum-to-be to manage the, um, her anxiety during, I guess, this really stressful period? 
Yeah. So look, my big thing firstly would be um, to speak about what you're feeling worried about. So whether that's just to your partner, whether it can be to a friend perhaps, or to a professional. So whether that's um, a midwife or, a, you know, your doctor or obstetrician, if you have it, or if you have a doula, so even doulas who are professionally trained support people, um, they're still providing a lot of support online. So being able to have someone that you trust who can really listen to, it helps a lot if we get to speak our fears. When we get to speak through our fears and anxieties, it lessens often the intensity of them. And then we can look at how we can put strategies in place to help us. So firstly, absolutely about, you know, speaking about what's going on. Secondly, my absolute number one go-to for all pregnancy, regardless of what's going on, is learning about breathing and learning how to help calm ourselves. So one of the breathing techniques we use in our program, online program, and women use it for labour and also even when they're not in labour, but it's, and even when their babies are here, is about learning to breathe deeply in through your nose, out through your nose. That actually helps to calm what we call the parasympathetic nervous system, which allows your heart rate to slow down, lowers your blood pressure, and can give you that sense of calm in your body. So when we are feeling stressed or anxious, just even sitting down, putting your hands on your belly and taking three really deep breaths in through your nose, out through your nose, to just give your body the sense of, okay, let's just come back to a bit of calm for the moment. So breathing, not only for birth, but before birth is really, really, um, really, really powerful. The other thing that I would also say too that can really help with anxiety is um, about visualisation, seeing what we do want, not what we don't want. So there's some beautiful apps out there that really do support just mindfulness and awareness. So if you are feeling really anxious, you know, laying down, putting your feet up, you know, putting your hands on your beautiful belly, doing some deep breathing and listening to some form of visualisation or something like Mind the Bump or... Um, you know, there's lots and lots of different online apps out there that have got visualizations, especially for pregnancy, where we get to come back to just breathing and also seeing what we do want to create. So that can be a really good thing just to curb some of your anxiety, seeing what we do want. Um, and without doubt, you know, another big thing that I really support is just self-care. So what's going to help you feel better? So that might be just going for a walk. It might be having a big bath. It might be having a good cry. Crying is so fantastic in pregnancy. I'm always like tears are the work of pregnancy. So just let them flow because we'll often feel better when we release it so all those things I think can help to just minimize your anxiety and finding what it is that works for you you know to to help you feel better mm -hmm. and in your opinion how important are partners during this time and really how can they be a part of this process Mm. So I think, um, you know, partners are always, you know, I always say you make the baby and, and how the baby gets in is how the baby gets out. And by that, we mean what helps, you know, in birth and also just leading up to birth is intimacy, is connection, is lots of listening with each other. So I know that partners may feel a level of tension now too because of what's going on, but it's really important to be united. So I say, you know, again, listening to each other's fears are really, really powerful, coming back to breathe coming back to trusting your body and and the excellent medical care that we do have here in this country because we're a very lucky country we've got amazing medical care um, I would also you know encourage too for partners to do some form of education so like doing something like our program online and doing it together so you can talk about what you're learning and then you can have some great conversations around okay well what do we want for this birth and the partner can ask questions how can I support you best so go through a bit of a birth rehearsal go through a bit of an idea of even writing a birth plan to go all right well you know if you if you want to give it a go naturally without drugs then what are the options that we've got we can use the shower we can move around we can do massage we can do breathing like getting a bit of a game plan together so that they feel a little bit more okay I know what to do I often find in labor that and I'll just talk more about men for the moment but men are usually just like all right I've got to fix this what have I got to do so if we give them the right things to do then they can, um, you know, and if they learn those tools, then they can, uh, then a woman will often feel really supported and that helps her relax as well. So, and at the end of the day, I say to partners, you know, oxytocin, this beautiful hormone that helps us labor and helps bring the baby, it's the hormone of love. So if you do not know what to do in labor, the, the only recommendation I would say is just love her. Love her like you've never loved her before. Bring your best lines. Tell her how magnificent she is, how beautiful it is. Because a woman who feels loved in labor will often be able to relax, get that oxytocin flowing you know and then no matter what unfolds in the birth we've, we've often had a really good positive experience we've well, given us some beautiful tips today how would you sum summarize what your key messages are um, for, for for couples at this time then 
So I would just say, get some good education. So do some learning, whatever that looks like, so that you can understand what your body's going to do, how you can work with it and what you can, you know, ask for or get really, you know, on board with what you want. Uh, come back to just trusting your body. So doing those beautiful techniques about breathing and just seeing what we do want to create and then working as a team together. Like it's so, so important. And, and look, at the end of the day, I just say having a baby is one of the most amazing things you ever do. Even amongst this crazy that's going on in the world at the moment, come back to this incredible magic and joy that you know your baby's going to be born into the world so if we can just you know use that energy i often say we might not have control over what happens in the birth but we've got control over the energy that we bring to it so you know think about what do we want for this experience and you know when you clear on that then that can help you you know move forward and to have a positive uh, positive experience all right, wonderful. And if parents have got any other questions for you um, and or want to, I guess, find the app as well, whereabouts can they find you? So you can find us at aboutbirth.com.au. So um, that's our website that's got our program there. We're also on social media, Facebook, Instagram. You can ask questions, you know, follow us on there. And if you are looking for extra support one-on-one -on -one like this, you know, you can contact us through any of those platforms as well and, and um, we can provide that. Wonderful. Thanks so much for, for your time today. Really love the chat and um, hopefully we'll have Thank another, you, another chance again in the future. Take care. Thanks so much, Rachel. Bye. <laughs>